plane tickets, gasoline, groceries. Inflation has hit the U.S. hard. In 2022, the consumer price index rose at its fastest pace in more than four decades. So the CPI, as it's more commonly known, is pretty much the most closely watched indicator of inflation in the U.S. and consequently the world. The Consumer Price Index estimates the change in prices for a basket of goods and services that represents the average household spending. Calculations made from that basket are used to make decisions that affect Americans all over the country. Decisions about adjusting tax brackets and benefits like Social Security and food stamps. And it's one of the indexes watched by officials at the Federal Reserve. Against the backdrop of the rapidly evolving economic environment, our policy has been adapting and it will continue to do so. But how is this basket selected and used to calculate the CPI? And when shaping policy decisions, why does the Fed pay the most attention to a different index? The department in charge of the index, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, or BLS, looks at several categories, each given a different importance, to compute the month's percent change. Some of the most important categories are food, transportation, and housing. When you pull that all together, housing is a big, I mean, it's the biggest expense um, that we pay for out of pocket. Rent, your mortgage, that's going to be, you know, a hefty chunk more than anything else. The BLS gives each category its relative importance based on a survey of what consumers buy. Keeping track of all of those items people spend money on and their price changes month to month is the job of the BLS's price checkers. The agency employs over 450 workers who track prices for up to 100,000 goods and services and 8,000 housing units every month based on the survey of what consumers are purchasing. To make sure products they are price tracking haven't changed, they compare the product to a list of data points from the month before. Sometimes that list can be up to 11 pages. This process helps to ensure the CPI's accuracy. The BLS is basing those calculations off of an urban consumer paying out of pocket. The formula excludes non-direct spending, like payments from nonprofit organizations that provide services to households, Medicare and Medicaid, and employer-sponsored health care plans. But again, this is just an average. Inflation affects different people differently. How you feel inflation depends a lot on what's the ba- what's in your spending basket and how that differs from the average person's as captured in the CPI. If you have to drive to work every day, you are feeling inflation a lot more than the person who has to take the subway because gas prices have gone up so much. And the index doesn't include everything. That's why some, like the Federal Reserve, prefer indexes they see as broader, like the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, or PCE. Over the 12 months ended in April, total PCE prices, that's Personal Consumption Expenditures Prices, rose 6.3%. One of the reasons the Fed prefers this index is that the CPI only transitions items in and out of the basket every two years, while the PCE changes its basket month to month based on consumer trends. The variations in how CPI and PCE are calculated mean that the two indexes can reflect American inflation slightly differently, but the Fed takes both into account. The Fed's monetary policy actions are guided by our mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people. Looking at multiple indexes gives the Fed a broad picture of American inflation. CPI is undoubtedly um, something that they're watching closely, especially the month-on-month movement. Like, that's an important gauge of, you know, it does this inflation we're seeing, does it have momentum? And rising inflation of vital items, especially over long periods of time, can cause more issues, like inflation becoming embedded in the economy. We at the Fed understand the hardship that high inflation is causing. We're strongly committed to bringing inflation back down, and we're moving expeditiously to do so. When inflation remains high for too long, consumers begin to change their behavior in ways that can keep prices elevated. So for instance, like, oh, my bills are getting really expensive, so I'm going to ask for a raise. And then your boss is like, people seem to be willing to pay my higher prices, so I'll just give this person a raise and raise my prices. That keeps inflation kind of chugging along. Um, in a way that, you know, can be eventually harmful for the economy. By looking at changes to individual categories like housing and food, consumers can learn specific information from the overall CPI. That's going to give you a sense of whether inflation is broadening, and that's really the concern right now for the economy. The CPI is a useful tool for economists and consumers alike, and it's a good indicator of whether inflation will begin to subside or whether it will become more embedded in the economy. 